Hey guys, sorry for being a little bit late. It's not Chris's fault this week, it's uh, my fault. Um, had to restart the computer. Technical problems uh, every week by guys that are supposed to know what they're doing. It's never good, but uh, these things happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> yeah, we'll give it a few minutes while people are jumping in, but Chris... Um, what has been going on with you in the past week? How has the course sales been going? Uh, well, I mean, it's just been, uh, I don't know. They're, they come periodically, you know, and then I was doing the, uh, I had the tool I was giving away because we've been testing out other tools. That was like the very first one that we came up with just to get the processes down. Uh, so that was really good. I was able to get the, the list up. Um, I mean, we had a good week, uh, you know, I had a good week. <laughs> I had a pretty good week. Yeah. Um, and a good haircut. <laughs> Obviously, someone's taken. Oh, yeah. Well, I it. Sort that out. Makes it be grown back from um, tackling it a few months ago. But um, yeah, we've got some new faces here, I think, that, that are, I don't remember these names. Jay, hello. Mm -hmm. um, Santosh. Um, we will come back to your question shortly. Fraser Cairns, um, good to see you, buddy. Um, and Randy Road, what team it is Chicago oh. Red Bulls? Um, Scotty Pippen, his jersey. Well, not his actual jersey, but <coughs> I watched this really cool thing on Netflix about Michael Jordan. I think it was called The Last Dance or something about Michael Jordan and, and all the Chicago Bulls stuff and all of that stuff that, <coughs> that went on um, back in the 90s. So it was interesting stuff. So I thought, what to buy one. <laughs> um, I like, I like a, a basketball top anyways. Making a thing, show off my nice you know, tattoos. Did you know, I love Jordan. Did you know that he's a gambling fiend? <laughs> yeah. He loves the gamble. Um, yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, gambling's good. It's uh, to a degree. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm not sure how bad his was because obviously in the last dance it was talking about <clears throat> it touched on gambling and potentially maybe that his father died because of something to do with gambling and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, interesting, um, interesting stuff. <laughs> but. What is more interesting to you guys? I'm pretty sure some of you will absolutely hate basketball, so we will stop it's talking good. about basketball, <laughs> um, and we will just go into the questions um, as we normally do. Just keep your questions coming in the live chat. Before I go into the questions, um, what I do want to say, just a, a reminder, if anyone's interested in Chris's G-Stack course, there is a link below the video there, um, $179, um, <coughs> 20 videos, I think it was, and uh, something that I have had a good look through myself now and would highly recommend. Obviously, you guys have seen Chris over the weeks and offers a lot of value anyway, so um, if you're interested in that, do it. If not, you're lost. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm the no high-pressure sales here. Um, but yeah, it's just worth mentioning that that is there. But we will jump in to. And if quick... you ask me, I'll give it to you for a hundred. Send me a message. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just wanted people to be able to learn because I I see a lot of them going on. And two, I had somebody give me a review of it, and they said this is certainly not for beginner beginners. Uh, and plus, I'm I don't know if I mean you noticed like I'm kind of high energy, so when I'm doing it. it I'm at a fast pace, you know, so it's definitely not for beginners. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's yeah. lots of questions, lots of questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Santosh is asking how to get students for online tutoring. I don't know how I should approach them. Um, what what would be your way? I, you know, if I was giving advice to Santosh, I would say it isn't you approaching people for them to come to learn from you. I think you need to put out some stuff and they will then come to you. People come to me all the time saying, oh, man, I watched you and Chris and you are fucking great guys and I heard you talking about this. Can you tell me more about it? 
in, you know, I, and I can say, well, I can. I can charge you for a consult call. I can charge you for a training course, or I can train your team on that, or whatever. So these guys eventually approach you. Obviously, Chris and, and I are not paid for sitting here doing this just now, and people are maybe going, well, what, what, what fucking value is there for that? <laughs> You've got to give enough away to build your reputation. And I, I, for me, that is how I would be looking for it, Santos. You know, the, you, you don't approach students saying, I'm the best, come and you know, learn with me. I think you've got to put enough out there for, for people to want to come to you. Um, Chris, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I 100% agree with that. I mean, you know, I forget how the saying goes, but the guy who puts in all the work now won't have to work later. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I think that showcasing exactly what you know and why it could help and benefit the person complimentary for free is definitely way as the top of the funnel, however you want to look at it. But secondly, I would look at always, always every industry I go into, who's winning? What are they doing? Get into their, you know, their little email list or whatever they're doing. What are they doing? How are they winning? What are they doing? Go to similar web. What kind of traffic are they running? What are they doing over here? What's their social media presence? Who do they know? Who are they friends with? Who are they on LinkedIn with? Start, you know, just start the process and just go ham with it. And eventually you keep throwing stuff at the wall. You're going to hit. Yeah. So, that's what I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you do that well, you will have some degree of success. So do that, Santosh. Just start moving. Um, it's going to happen eventually. You know? <laughs> if, it, if it's your time, it's your time you're going to hit. So just keep working. Sam is saying is his favorite show. Chris, your bold head looks good. <laughs> Thank you. My <laughs> wife is, uh, yeah, you know how that goes. And you get you shave your head off and the kids are rubbing in. Yeah. Thank you, though. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, damn barbers are closed in the UK yeah I had to give myself a skinhead G uh, a couple of months ago wasn't a good look <laughs> uh, but it was fun I felt good actually I felt fresh yeah um, it's easy Tommy, to yeah maintenance Tommy Finnan um, is hey, saying Mark. hi hasta la vista boss hi my man I'm on a show with Hasta La Vista Boss on Saturday night, 8 p.m. Um, so looking forward to that. Javid Hakimi? That. What I was that? I saw that that gentleman there that you were speaking of. I saw him coming up in search results, pitching, um, you know, talking about products and whatnot, uh, uh, applying value, you know. For yeah. Um, Robin Iyer, hi. So Jaceline. Uh, Satellite, sorry. Um, how do I index citations? Any favorable techniques? What are you doing, Chris? Well, I mean, if if you're if you're looking at your structured citations, the ones that are most important, like your Yelps and whatnot, those are probably nine times out of ten going to find their way in. Uh, but as far as like your unstructured, you're building them and they're they're just all over the place. You're just trying to build up as many as you possibly can. The best way to get them to stick and stay indexed and to give value to your business would be build links to that link. Uh, so that's what I would do. That's probably yeah. What I mean. Do do that. Yeah. Um, Glenn Ingram is asking if this is the gun show. Wait a minute. This is the gun show. <laughs> No, I've not been working hard in the gym. Pretty embarrassed to say, but I will get there. Um, S-U-R-K. Hey, Priyanka. You guys from Philadelphia. Go Sixers. From Michael DeSoy. Uh, <laughs> go Everson. Bloody hell. I'm not wearing a <laughs> basketball t-shirt again. Um, <laughs> there's more basketball chat and questions. Um, how to create backlink. So, Surav. What's up? Um, well, let me... Yeah, go, Chris, if you want to answer it. <laughs> I mean, I see the list here. So, so generally, to create a backlink, back link, which is looked at as a vote from search engines, right? You would want to go to uh, another site, uh, hopefully within your industry, right? To provide topical relevance is what it's called. Because uh, obviously, I think that you're a beginner, right? So when you go there, a hyperlink or a URL will be placed on the page, all right? And that is how you create a backlink. Thank you for your question. <laughs> um, so, Jordan Pierce is saying, why did you skip my first question? I've not seen a question from Jordan. 
yeah, nothing's pulled through on here, Jordan. So if you could stick it in again, mate, we will certainly answer it. Um, oh, Ken, 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 Ken. Your friend Ken from your group. Um, good to see you again, Ken. What's today's golden nugget, Chris? Man, you know, I, I gave away um, a beautiful... I think, Ken, aren't you in the Facebook group, the private Facebook group? Because I went on, I did a live... I left a particular video up for two hours because I've been running some tests with my small little group of guys. Um, and if you, that's, you know, that's the, the best gold I'm willing to give away uh, this week. Um, but it has to do with video and it has to do with uh, Google My Business. So that's all I can say about that. Go and have a look. Join the private group. Um, Ken is in your private group. Um for sure, because I popped in there myself yesterday to see what the hell was going on. Um, but I've not seen this golden nugget yet, so I am intrigued. So well, I left it up and I, I took it, I took it back down. You took I, it down, fuck. I had to, I had to. <laughs> well, I had you know 47 people saw it, so I figured 47 people that's enough. We're done with this one. <laughs> come on, man. Um, there's a lot of process to it, though. It's not yeah. fair. David Holgate, good to see you, buddy. If you wanted to send traffic to a GMB listing, would you have traffic pointing directly to the GMB or would you have the traffic go to a buffer page of some sort? Uh, I mean, I've done both. Um, and, and generally, too, I, I, you want direct going to the GMB entity as business searches, right? Uh, looking for your business. Um, and then as that starts to show up, we can say if we're looking at the green and blue and orange within your insights panel, you want to start sending that green, right? As the green starts to increase, then you can start combining your keyword per plus brand traffic. Now, would I use a buffer? You can, but generally, uh, I like direct searching within the search engine going in to the entity. That's generally what I do, or from your website to the profile. So... That's up to you, though. There's a lot. You mix it up. Mix it up. Yeah. Mix it up. Mix it up. Um, so, Jordan Pierce, uh, I, I, I agree totally with uh, what Chris has said on your question, David. Just seeing Jordan Pierce's question come in. How come SEO agencies always write, it depends when asked a simple question? Why are all SEO agencies full of crap? Chris. <laughs> I, I try to always give an answer, but I, I completely agree. And I think because they don't have a solid answer, um, you know, and they don't want to look stupid. So they'll just say, you know, it depends. That's what I think. I think the, the problem with agencies is a lot of the guys that do any kind of face-to-face -face interaction are not normally the guys that are doing the donkey work anyway. Um, you know, the truth of the matter is, Agencies have got a glorified sales guy. All of the work's probably been outsourced or delegated, you know, to, to a number of different countries across the world, and they don't fucking know themselves. Um, know that is the truth of the matter. That's what happens with agencies, um, which is why I'm not a huge... I mean, some agencies are good, but, yeah, I'm not a fan of the it depends pish. If you don't know, you don't know. Um and uh, yeah, none of us know everything. So um, wish, <laughs> yeah, but, <I> <laughs> but if if I was asked something that didn't know the answer, I'm pretty sure you you'll agree, Jordan. I'll just fucking make the answer up anyway. And if it sounds plausible, then people tend to believe it. And um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll not go into that. Um, <coughs> Alessia, good to see you, Alessia from Ukraine. How to get that sign number one rated by Google users in three pack? Do you know a way to force that to happen? I mean, you're you're going to. It, it really depends on who your competition is within the three pack, and do you have more ratings than them? I mean, that's you know that's the answer to that one. That's how you get it. Can you force it? I'm sh I'm sure you could. You know, I, I, I've had certain instances of this previously um, where. I've been working with someone and they've basically said, how come I've not got this, but that guy's got it? Um, talking about the same thing. Um, and I've never found a resolution to how you actually trigger that to happen. 
what I also do believe, and I might be wrong here, um, got Jordan Pierce might actually be able to answer this because he is the, the guy that fucking knows everything about GMBs. I'm, I don't play that much with GMBs. But there was old um, ex- uh, stuff that you could add on previously from years ago. So I think older accounts might get that kind of thing, whereas newer accounts don't. Um, but I'm not sure of a, an exact way for that to, to get triggered as such. Um, you know, I have had someone ask me that before, saying, why is that guy got it and I've not? What the fuck's he doing that I'm not? You know, just two shitty local people um, and one has it and one doesn't. <laughs> and there wasn't, there's not an option to tick for that to, to happen, as you know. So it depends. It depends. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> funny man, he's a funny dude. <laughs> Rob Brown, have you ever used web, <laughs> web 2.0s? I'm laughing at the it depends, by the way. Have you ever used two uh, web 2.0s for branded anchors? Then guest post niche edits for only exact match to get a better bang for your buck. What, what, what? Well, I mean, everyone's going to have a different answer for this, uh, you know. For what you know, what I'm looking for is the most powerful links I'll probably have close to exact or partial match anchors, and then you know to to mix that shit up. Of course, you know brandy anchors and all the other stuff just to mix it up will be further down the line, such as guest posts, such as web 2.0s, and so on. So yeah, that's kind of the way I would do it. But Chris, what about yourself? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yes. And then if I'm building links to those links, like cheaper links, I'm exact all the way. And yeah. Brand, I like branded too, but yes, I, I agree. Absolutely. LP, how do you get into this private group? What is uh, the facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Chris Palmer SEO, no spaces and just send yeah, a yeah. request. And if I look at it and you know, I like your friend profile and, you know, you're not belonging to a thousand groups. I'll confirm it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Facebook user, do you think link building is considered as an art? Are you an artist? Uh, I, I, I don't know about an art. Um, I think that there are some people that are more skilled than others. Um, I, I consider it a, a, a skilled job. I. I don't know about art, no, but I would I would kind of agree in one way. Now, the reason that I would agree now, I think anyone can build a link if they know how to do it. I think where the art side of things come in is some guys are just fucking wired up the wrong way and they think out so far outside the box with such great ideas on how to do something that that is like art for me. It's like, man. Why the fuck did I not think of this? You know, I've seen so many link building tricks, so <coughs> so many ideas, so many people thinking outside the box, and that that that's not something you can train to certain people. You know, even you know, again, when I'm, Jordan Pierce is in the chat there, when I went to NFG Rockstars last year, most of those guys, including the guys in the audience, were fucking maniacs, like in the nicest possible way. They were all doing weird niches. They were all doing weird strategies. They were all fucking maniacs. And, you know, they were all proper, proper fucking proper um, SEO people. And, and and the reason I say that is they were so creative. You know, they were all friends. They can all make money online. And they're all just thinking outside the box and looking for different little intricate details that are going to set them ahead of the next guy. So... You know, <clears throat> there's only a small amount of people that, that have that ability. You know, there's millions of SEOs out there. Probably in my life of traveling and speaking and all that kind of stuff, I've probably met a couple of hundred, you know, top, top guys where I would go, I need to talk to that guy again or I'm going to stay in touch with him because he is the real deal. Um, and that is what I would consider the, the art type of thing. You know, all the stuff that Jordan... You know, even yourself, Chris, and all that stuff, you guys are all making money in different ways. You're not doing the typical run of the mill agency stuff. And and you know that that for me shows a level of creativity and, and 
yeah, I would I would consider that to be some art form type of work. But then maybe I'm overthinking it. But that's some kind of compliment, by the way, Jordan. You're not getting any more, so fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> He's in there sitting, probably going, yes. Um, in their deep sing, <coughs> any tips to get to zero position? The only tip that I'd give you is I would drag that. I, I don't know what kind of NLP tool you're using, right? But I would make sure that the, I forget how they, the sediment of the, it's hard to say, man. You know, it's, it really depends on that one. Uh, but what I found, like I, I got a zero position and all I did was copy it and I drug it into an NLP tool. Um, and I just made sure that the sediment was correct. Um, I mean, that's really the only tip that I could give you and make sure that you're on the first page. So. Yeah. You've got to try and test and tweak like yeah. you've done there. You, you know, you've went, right, I've got this. It's doing all right, but what's this NLP shit? Like, what's going to happen if I, you know, tweak a few things here and there? Um, and I think that's what you've got to continue to do. Just do yeah. shit. Just start tweaking to get that. Right. That's what it really was, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just got to to go for that, but you know, obviously, schema and all knowledge graph stuff and and all of that kind of stuff could potentially help with all of that shit. So, um, but tweak, 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 keep adding shit, and hope for the best. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's a hard and fast rule to get in there. I, I mean, I've never I've met people that have been successful with it very frequently, but I I haven't said somebody can say, hey, I'm going to get in there a hundred. Yeah, it's really a hard one, you know. Yeah, it depends. Uh, <laughs> lean, lean a jar. Any suggestions for driving traffic to a bike rental business in Italy that's looking to target English-speaking tourists, German, Swiss, Brits, Americans? Uh, man, a bike a bike rental means that you have a physical location, so that's a hyper location. So really, they have to be within your vicinity for you to get them to come to your bike rental. So mm -hmm. I would be looking at. How do I get people in this vicinity? Where's the airport? Uh, where are the people going? Where's the food eateries at? Where are these people that are coming in? Where are they going so I could give them my message? That's what I would be looking for. I mean, that's just, you know, because, right? Am, am I? Am I yeah. Or, well, excuse me. You've got to, you've got to, again, think of a number of different ways how you're going to get English or, or, you know, American, Germans, whatever, any tourist to Italy, you, you need them to be in a specific area to come to your shop. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of different ways um, that you can do it. Like Chris says, you know, you've got to think about where these people go, how you're going to target them. Um, you know, from an SEO point of view, I think, you know, do you, do you start to rank for things like, you know, people in America traveling to Italy, like for things to do in Italy, you know, is it bike rides, is it tourism things, or is there a website where you can get a placement or a blog post on there um, that, that talks about things to do in Italy or whatever? You know, from an SEO point of view, you need content on a lot of these other websites, um, or you need to create websites that give that information and you run that as a business and you charge other people and I know that seems a lot for a bike ride guy, but I would be owning the things to do in Italy and I would be putting my bikes up the fucking top and then I would be charging other people underneath to say, you know, there's there's other shit to do, you know, go and see, you know, the San Siro Stadium or or whatever else. So yeah, it's it's there's so many opportunities for you out there. Um, it really comes down to whether you really want to go down that route, but I'd be looking at, trying to get on other people's websites as well. You know, maybe some sponsored post or paid advertising on these kind of websites that are for people in America traveling to Italy and likewise with the UK and Germans and Swiss. Um, could be a good way of driving traffic to your business. Um, if that was my business, I'd be down at the airport handing everybody a flyer here. Hey, come here. It's $10 off, $10 off. Right? I'd just be <laughs> running around. You should come here. This would be great for you and your family. That's what I would yeah. do. I mean, the ranking stuff aside, but I would have to get them while they're there because nobody in America is thinking, hey, when I go to Italy, I'm going to ride a bike, right? Exactly. That's when you get there. That would be great to do. I want to see the town. I want to do this. I, I'd be trying to hit them once they get there. You know, what's the search volume 
in Italy for bike rentals. What's the search volume? I mean, are people literally looking for that or is that a, a whim idea? So but who knows? I'm, I'm not in that industry. Also, I used to uh, work in an industry where a lot of people come to Scotland to play golf because there's some real good golf courses here in Scotland. And the the guy that owned the company who was paying me to do SEO basically said, I want fat, rich Americans <laughs> landed on my website who have got lots of money, who come over here with their six or their ten mates and want fucking golf trips, take you know a helicopter trip over to this, that, the next thing, and they basically package all that together. What we done there is we obviously had to rank well in America for golf trips to Scotland, golf trips to this, golf trips to that, or how to you know tee off time at St Andrews Golf Course and shit like that. So again, that's something you would have to do in these countries. You have to target these countries if there's enough search for people. The, the, the problem you've got is, is someone going to be sitting in America going, am I going to get a bike to ride in Italy? I'm not sure they would do that part. Or they might, they, they might, they might not. I'm not sure. Obviously, it's a different instance from the golf situation I found myself in, but that's the way we tackled it. And, and those were the boss's exact words. Get me those fat, rich Americans. That was the exact fucking words <laughs> that came out of his mouth. Um, and that's exactly what you're saying. How do you get those fat, rich Americans or fat, rich British people to come and ride a bike here? Um, so hopefully that helps. I'm not sure it did, but there you go. Um, <coughs> Jay, we did answer this question uh, on indexing your GMB citations. Build links to those links. We did do that as one of the first questions, I think. Um Sam, can I use those generic guest posts you mentioned from People Power to mix up anchor text? Because I don't want to pay a hundred pounds for an anchor text that says click here. So that's just so sad. So yes, sad. That's a video referring to me, Chris. I put up a video. Um, did I, I'm not even sure I published that video. Um, but, but anyway, no, I did. I did last night. I, know I did last night. I'm like, how the fuck has he seen that video? Anyway. Yeah, so you can, yeah, He's you don't want too much content. He's been yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, you don't want to be paying a hundred pounds to have an anchor text that says click here. Fuck that. You know, the ones that you're paying for are that are most powerful. You need to get your bang for your buck for it. Use all the cheap shit, tier two stuff, and all that shit to to you know diversify your anchors. That that's the way I think both Chris and I. Um, do it and uh, works well for us. So yeah, do the same, Sam. Um, Javid Hakimi. Um, if someone's knowledge panel is showing up for the specific keywords, um, what can we do to get the map pack to show up instead of the knowledge panel, and so we could have a chance to get some traffic? The, the knowledge panel and the map pack are not the same thing. The knowledge panel comes from a lot of different sources, wiki data, and everything else. That's not something you can just go and beat and replace with, you know, a GMB. You know, there's different hey, calculator, a different algorithm for, for that. And obviously, if I want a knowledge panel for my name, it's not, I'm not going to build citations as such. You know, what I'm looking for is wiki data, you know, being in places of no and, you know, on IDM, uh, the Internet Movie Database, on Amazon as an author and, you know, some trustworthy places. That's how I would potentially get a, a knowledge graph. It's not the same thing. And you don't, if someone's got that knowledge graph, you're not going to be able to replace that with a, a map pack. Not in my opinion anyway. Chris, what do you think? Uh, generally, I like the knowledge panel. But two, I mean, have you been searching from, say, grab your phone, different you know maybe change a proxy like check uh are you sure that the the map isn't popping when you're searching very locally uh not just for yourself too but uh generally though i don't think that you're gonna be able to beat it uh i don't i don't think so and i think they're two separate completely separate different things so yeah i think you're on the right track there uh craig 
But I think obviously sometimes there's certain instances where the map pack doesn't pop for whatever reason. Uh, you know, that's something you'd have to ask Google. There's certain search terms you put in, even very local, and the map pack still doesn't pop up. Um, in certain instances, very few and far between, but you may be suffering from that. But as I say, um, you need to try and get that GMB to pop. But, um, yeah, other than that, it's hard to say without seeing it. Um, Facebook user, have you tried to build links as tier from Google Doc to Google Sites, then to your site? Do you do that, Chris? Have I tried to build links as a tier from a Google Doc to a site? Yep. Yeah, lots of times. Yes, I have. <laughs> I mean, I don't think... I mean, again, too, I mean, a, a Doc by itself doesn't pass a lot a, a lot of juice. I would say it's, you know, way down here. Uh, but have I done it? Yes. I, I don't think that that should be your only, it's not going to be the only thing that's going to take you to the top. <laughs> yeah. Mix it up again. Yeah. I want yep. you to say it depends. I want you to say it depends. <laughs> it depends it's part of a strategy though. Um, Tommy Finnan, put it back up, Chris. I just missed that video. Just seen the notification and it was gone by the time yeah. it got back in. Some stuff um, not sitting too long, you know. It's not the kind of thing that you know I want to share it. Whoever sees it sees it because it's not the kind of thing I would put on YouTube, you know. So yeah, Fuck just you know, I won't see this now, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Tommy's also asking anyone experiencing issues with GMB verifications, he's saying he's he's waiting four weeks for his cards to come through. I no, I I haven't. And two, uh, lately, I mean, I've been playing around with getting the postcards, or actually not getting the postcards. Uh, and I've been getting pretty quick. So, um, yeah, Tom, I, they've been coming. It probably ten days, I would say. But I'm, I guess, I mean, I'm in USA. I don't, I'm, I'm in PA too, where we were doing it. So, I, about ten days it took. Yeah, that certainly four weeks seems to be a long time for any that I've ever done. It's normally, I mean, sometimes I've had them in two or three days. Um, in the UK, for ours, ours comes from the Netherlands, I think, or GMB stuff. I'm pretty sure it comes from uh, Amsterdam. Um, but, yeah, it's normally a couple of days or a week tops. So, try. I mean, there have been instances where I've uh, tried to verify a GMB and I've just heard fuck all. And, you know, I've had to resubmit. And I think there's an element of that that goes on. They just fucking ignore it. Um, either that or the postmen's are really bad. You know, the postmen are really fucking bad people. But I think some of that stuff must get lost in the in the system somewhere, um, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Jordan Pierce laughing at your, it depends. Um, so, <coughs> um, Alessa's talking about her thing. Hasta la vista, boss. Thanks for the shout out, Craig and Chris. If people are asking for SEO consulting, what is the best way to price your services? Would you charge per hour or per service? Now, what I would state to anyone, and this is just going to be my argument on this because it's something that actually really fucking annoys me, is you're not paying for an hourly rate. You're paying for the knowledge that that person has. Now, it's taken me 18 years of fucking everything up, <laughs> blowing shit up, being stressed out my box um, to be able to do that. And obviously if I can relay something to a person in an hour that could save them a year's worth of their time, then I'm entitled to charge whatever I want. It doesn't have to equate to what is a good hourly service. Um, that's how I see it because people say, if I say to someone, well, well, you know, what is it? You, you know, what what do you want consulting on? And they're like, well, I want to know this, I want to know that, I want to know that. Basically, what they want is a fucking shopping list from me to say, here's all the good vendors to go to, here's where to buy some links, here's where to go to for an audit, blah 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 blah. What's that worth to that guy? That's what that's what I would be charging. Not oh well, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I can't charge more than a hundred pounds an hour. You know, that's the that's the kind of sick thing that people think about it's so you can't really equate it to an hourly rate it's what that perceived value is going to be and uh, some people may want to pay it some won't you know i've got a load of guys that will say craig i'd love to sit down with you for four or five hours and just 
go over shit and you know have you look at this and you know give me feedback on it and all that kind of stuff. And I'll charge, you know, if I like the guy, I might not charge him as much as I would charge another guy. You know, I just try and figure out what <coughs> that guy expects to pay for it and also, you know, what is a fair reflection on the, the time that I've spent to learn that as well. So that's how I would do it rather than an hourly basis kind of rate saying, well, it's £100 an hour because it can't work like that. But Chris, what, what's your say-so on that? That's just, I mean, I, I set the, the price at the going rate to get them in the door to get the call. But once I do an analyzation and ask them, you know, the rundown, what exactly, you know, how can I help you? That's when the pricing begins because it's really how you said it's saving them, you know, saving them money. I'm, I'm thinking how much are they going to make? So yeah. I'm making you money and I'm saving you time, which time is way more valuable. Uh, so that's that's where it starts with me. I start at the baseline, and then it's really an answer of what do you need, and then it's yeah. here's the cost for my time. But usually, I'm I'm very I'm a nice guy though, so <laughs> you yeah, know nah, you don't don't rip the piss out of people either. You know I think that that is really important, but don't undersell yourself either. Um, Elton Musa, hey guys, do you use IBM, Wasabi, and Alibaba for cloud stacking? And how many stacks deep do you usually go? I, I think that in the beginning for building out the foundation, um, it depends. It depends. Uh, it depends on how much power you're trying to generate. Um, I mean, generally, it say a local niche or whatnot. If I'm building out a ring, I would go two. You know, two separate entity stacks. But you're talking about cloud too. So if I'm building those entities generally to, to work with one another, because one's focusing on keywords, the other one's focusing more on relevancy and, and bringing in relevancy. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it depends on the budget, depends on how much time and depends on the competition. Just don't go too wild with how deep you go as well. The timing, it's, it, yeah. <laughs> um. Itamar's laughing, not belonging to a thousand groups. <laughs> Alicia's talking to Jordan. Michael Stone, do you think having a single GMB could hurt or help rankings for national keywords? I I, I, I said this before. I mean, to validate a particular entity for your, if you only have one and your business is based, say, here, to validate that entity, I think a GMB is proper. But if you're targeting nation, right, nationwide, I think that it's irrelevant if you only have one. I think it would be a good idea to maybe, you know, get more. But if you only have one to validate where you are and your brand and your entity, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't think it's going to hinder you or hurt you in any way. I think it's going to be a bonus. Yeah. So that's just my opinion. Cool, cool. And Facebook is not showing DG. Or I just call this guy Canadian Algerian because uh, that's where he's he's staying in Canada. Comes from Algeria. I hate trying to say that name. Um, so yeah, the Canadian Algerian. Sorry, mate. I, coming up with this blank face, which is probably better than your own. Nah, I'm only kidding on. <laughs> he's a nice guy. That's why he's um, a great. <laughs> I just like giving giving some abuse now and again. Um, good to see you here, though. Um, Sam, if somebody has copied my... In fact, guys, before I go on to Sam's question, make sure you give this video a like. We only have a couple of likes on here, so make sure you give the video some love. Um, yeah, fun. It, Time goes quick, Craig. Yeah. With you, man. 20 fucking two already. Um, but anyway, Sam... If somebody has copied my entire article and copied and pasted it onto the site with a no follow URL at the bottom, just writing source my site, should I ask them to remove it and or disavow it? Why? Absolutely not. No. I, I don't see uh, why you would want to disavow that or whatever. Um, you know, if they are you know, sharing your article or whatever, you know, it's a kind of a, a kind of positive thing, I would imagine. And, uh, yeah, I don't see there any reason why you'd ask them to remove it or disavow it or anything like that, you know. 
people probably copy and paste um, my articles all the time <laughs> until they read all the typos and then they have to fucking clean it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> hey, Chris and Craig, glad to see you both. Hello, Facebook user. Sorry we don't have your name shown up. Um, Daniel, can expired domain use in another niche, like sport niche, domain used in laptop niche? Would you ever like cross niches with an expired domain name, Chris? I mean, I, I'm generally not. I, I mean, I know that no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Uh, but if you find something that's really super juicy, I mean, just for some crazy reason, this just the, the backlink profile, it's getting tons of traffic and it's just the perfect price. I would probably just build, uh, I would just build that site out and then pass the links over. Um, yeah. But I generally wouldn't. I, I mean, if I'm sitting there, I'm I'm very, very particular. When I'm doing my back orders, I'm looking for the right one, and I don't care what the price is. I'm going for the best that I could possibly get, whatever the cost. So that's where I start, you know. That's just what I would do. But what I, is the most you've ever paid for an expired domain name out of curiosity? $1,100. Wow. $1, and... That's what I've ever spent. I mean, and generally, too, when I'm getting stuff, it's not – like I just got my 10th client now. Usually if I'm going to spend money, I try not to spend my own, you know, uh, <laughs> entities and properties. I have control. You see? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It's the best way to do it. Spend someone else's money. Fuck spending your own. Yes. Um, That's only fair. Hasta la vista boss. Any good advice lads for someone getting into legion? How to make <laughs> how to make sure you're getting paid for your leads, for example. That is a tough ass fucking question. It yeah. really does depend. That one. Um, I've had some horror stories with lead gen. Yes. Um, mainly, and I'm listen, I've got friends who do really well with lead gen. My reason for failure was targeting the wrong niches. It was all construction workers, roofers, and guys that pretty much don't fucking value SEO at all. They don't understand it. What I would say to anyone, the best piece of advice I could give you is go after professional people to sell the leads to, whether that be a dentist, a lawyer, a doctor, plastic surgeon, hair transplant guy, something like that, that, that there's a actually value in a lead as well you know you can get a couple of hundred bucks for these type of leads um rather than try to sell a roofing lead for 20 bucks and the guy really doesn't know what you're doing and doesn't value you and thinks seo shit and all that stuff so lead gen can work <coughs> if you're dealing with the right type of customer Um that that would be the one bit of advice i could give you this i get the phone calls and the pe and the people that show up that's I, I try to whack them for both. Uh, but yeah, I generally the people I, I've been again, I mean, I've talked about this seldomly, but I'm within, you know, travel agencies, travel clubs, not agencies, travel clubs and timeshares. So I'm only taking in people that are referrals from, hey, I've worked. This guy is a good guy. You know, I don't go looking, you know, they come to me and it's I've already got the OK from this guy, you know. Um, so, yeah, but I, they're out there. I really like that last one, the hair transplant. That would probably be a niche. You know, the doctors and the lawyers, those are, you know, generic for me. Listen, I would, a specialty. Hair trans, yeah. Hair yeah. transplants cost something, you know, they're several thousand bucks a pop, depending on where you go. In the UK, the average about, five, I think, five or six K a go. So, the, it, but here's the thing. I spoke to a hair transplant. Now, I've had a hair transplant, but... I spoke to a guy once and I said, what is your cost of giving, if I walk in today, what is your cost of giving me a hair transplant? The materials for that person are around about 100 bucks. The rest of it is his time. So there's so much fucking profit that they can afford to give you a good thousand bucks for getting a lead. Um, so I'm not saying that's right and you have to get a thousand bucks maybe 500 might be a fairer price because that guy's got to do all the work but you know you can really niche down on that stuff and you know work with a hair transplant guy and say you're in America you could have one in Vegas, one in LA, one over in New York uh, you know 
and you know fucking tons of different areas and make a shit ton of money just by becoming a real niche specialist in hair transplants that, that have, has apparently got a few different offices. So could be a niche in itself, as you say, Chris. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking, I said, oh, it's pretty good. <laughs> Plus, I, like, I like the recurring because a lifetime value of a customer, say for a, you know, a travel club, it's a recurring payment. It's 10 up front and then two grand a year. So when they're, they're willing to pay, you know, so. Yeah. yeah I love, that's the kind of stuff that, I mean, that's, I, it's been my, my go-to for forever. <laughs> forever, man. Um, Daniel, are you still doing niche affiliate websites or are you totally moved to website flipping business model? So for me, if that question is to me, which I think it probably is, um, I stay away from building Amazon niche affiliate websites or whatever because obviously I had a couple. I wasn't a huge fan of Amazon anyway, but I wanted to have a few just for the sheer hell of it to be able to tell stories about them. Um, I sold them um, a couple of months back when Amazon done their most recent um, commission and kicked everyone in the teeth during COVID, which was just outrageous. So I'm gone from building these websites. Now, what I'm not gone from is making an investment in a website, applying my team, my strategy and everything else, and then flipping the website on. It's the same way as buying a house that, you know, it, it got holes in the roof or whatever, and I get my team in, patch the roof up, give the place a lick of paint and, and you know, tart it up a little bit and flip it on for a lot more money. Digital assets is the way forward, and I think you can still make a shit ton of money doing that, and that's still something that I regularly do, but um, building crappy little Amazon websites to flip them isn't a good idea. What I would still consider doing, though, is buying an Amazon website and then changing the monetization model, just flipping it off of Amazon onto, you know, Target, for example. So Amazon might be paying 3%, Target may be paying 7%. By simply changing that monetization model to Target, which I can get a VA to do, is basically going to double my revenue by making that one change, which means that I can flip the website for double what I paid for it just by just by implement one one shitty little tactic, you know. But that website might be really shit on links. It might have shit content, so there could probably be scope for so much more growth. Um, and I think that's if you're good at SEO, I don't see why you wouldn't be, you know, thinking of investing in stuff, adding your own mix to it, and then flipping it. It's a good model. I. Mm. Man, I that's what I've been. I was dabbling with the like the promo codes and the coupon codes, like to get my feet wet with that. But that's mm -hmm. that's what I've been trying. That that's what I'm trying to really deep dive. I've been looking, and that's what I want. I, I like your. I like that idea. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> you get your hands dirty, you know, for a little bit, and then flip it on, and you get that nice, you know, x x amount of profit. Obviously, what I'm looking for is a lazy affiliate or just a lazy guy that really doesn't understand the SEO probably went in heavy in content, didn't really do any good technical stuff, didn't really build any good links. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's about spotting that opportunity. And what I would say with my experience is I can spot a shite website and there's tons of them out there. And that's an opportunity for me to go in, give the guy a few quid and um, scale that up very quickly and then flip it. So what uh, price range do you generally look for? Um, it depends. <laughs> no, um, I mean, obviously, there's websites out there that sell, you know, for a million bucks, you know, right. quarter of a million and stuff like that. You know, I started out pissing around with 10 grand websites. That's the cheapest I've ever bought. Um, you know, you buy a 10 grand website, probably do five grand worth of work on it, flip it for 50 grand. Um and then what I was doing was just building that up and buying a 20 grand website, a 30 grand website, a 50 grand website. Um, you know, I've never ever bought a website for more than a hundred grand. I'm not at that level. Um, and I'm not sure I ever would want to be at that level. You know, I think doing... Can I, can I write off my time and the links and everything else that goes into a site? Yeah. When I flip? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I was just um, curious. <laughs> yeah, there's for business reasons, tax reasons, all that shit, research and development money and all that stuff, you can claim all of that shit back. So um I'm sorry. But, 
hilarious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, good business model. People should try it out. Have a go. Um, Karen Atkinson, do you think the tone of your written content has any effect in the Google steps? So an e-commerce site in a niche market, all technical, be a little friendly and helpful, or does it not matter? For ranking purposes, in my opinion, absolutely not. It doesn't care. It doesn't care. It's looking for particular elements in particular places. That's it. It's an algorithm. It's crunching the numbers. Now, as far as user experience, as far as getting conversions, that might be another story. In my opinion, to rank, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Not um, yeah, I'm not sure. It's not something I can... 100% say I've done any weird testing on or whatever and obviously I use Grammarly where it will say the tone of that was you know friendly or or whatever um, but I think you know you're right Chris from a conversion point of view it might have an impact uh, I'm not sure Google are clever enough to be able to not yet. Uh, work out you know Google have just been able to tell that say like an apple apple vinegar and an apple pie are not the same thing you know that <laughs> you know google google's not as clever as some people give it credit for clever in some ways not so clever in other ways and i've heard that from google engineers and shit so um yeah um maybe in the future you never know um olaf russell does a link from a page to itself help with rankings i believe that that was floating around i heard that somewhere you know home page to home page links and then uh you know i i can't say that i've tested that myself but i would say that maybe within an environment where you're only against yourself do i think that it would give you a boost surely because it's the only link going to itself exact you're right i think that yeah you would see a bump but out in the wild i don't see how that could boop pump you up <laughs> you know i i just don't you know yeah no I, I don't think so. I wouldn't be. It's not something I would even want to try. It's, um, it's worth yeah. trying, you know, but not for me. I just don't think it has value. About that. Um, I've heard it floating around. Yeah. Jake Boyle, greetings from Melbourne, Australia, 2.30 a.m. Woo! Commitment, good to see you. I think you might be the first Aussie guy I've seen on here that's commented. So well done and hope you've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, only 12 likes. You tell them, Sam. Um, Ken is asking, can you share a method for ranking in the Knowledge Graph or panel? Um, ask me in a few weeks. I'm working on it. Um, it's on schema. So I'm not actually doing a lot of it myself. There's someone in the SEO Signals Lab group called Freda Fox who can make that happen, um, if anyone's looking to get that done. Um but it's all about the wiki stuff and, you know, there's a lot to it. It's not something you, you know, should share one method and it happens. The knowledge graph, especially for me, I share the same name as some comedian guy and a famous country western singer. Um, so <laughs> for me to try and get the knowledge graph is going to be a bit more of a ball buster. Um, but, yeah, you have to make sure that you're getting – wiki you know it's all all about being on all these wiki websites and other places and I'll, I'll share some hacks with you ken when i've got mine done and once i've confirmed that it's up there then i'm happy to share some of the tricks i played um in order to help trigger that knowledge panel um so yeah i'll tell you i, I don't want to say just now because you never know who's watching and they'll fuck it up for me and i won't get my knowledge panel fuck that um, so yeah, I'll share that in a few weeks if you can remind me. Um, when it's done, I'm hoping for it to be ready in a couple of weeks. Um, David Holgate's asking, in fact, do you know any ways to do that, by the way, um, on the knowledge graph, Chris? I, I mean, like I mentioned, um, I, I would definitely make sure that all of the aggregators are getting the details that need to be had, right? Well, you said weekly data, uh, and I would make sure that all of the scheme is on page. But to give you an itemized list, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. I couldn't give you that. No. Um, 
Cool, cool. David Holgate, is it worth adding your citations to the Google business site to help with indexing? I thought about it, but worried it looks a bit spammy. I wouldn't. Um, I just don't see there any need to do that because Google is crawling the web to look for citations for you. They don't really need to find it on that Google business website. Um, I wouldn't do it, but Chris, what do you think? I mean... That's to me. That's an unstructured citation. Putting your name, address, phone number on a site that isn't a structured citation source like Yelp. Yeah. Uh, would I put it on there? Sure. But do I think that it's going to be in very important? Not. I don't think that it's that important. No. Cool. Cool. Um, we've got three minutes left. So what we'll try and do is beast through as many of these as we possibly can. Please do still give us a like and uh, stuff like that as well, guys because um, we do appreciate that. So, Vin Vincent, and considering purchasing some links, is it okay to link to the money site, or should I always utilize a PBN? Purchasing links, should I link to the money site? Uh, if you're purchasing links, right, purchasing links from somewhere that you haven't created yourself, right, build your own site, I would build out properties that you can send links to that then go to your site. All right? So, I yeah. wouldn't go on to you know, Upwork or wherever and build links to your site. I, I wouldn't do that. I don't know. Craig, I highly doubt that you would do that. No, no, no. Uh, you, know, you can't trust anyone out there. Um, I would, in most cases, unless I knew the person, and I do know a lot of link builders, to be honest, um, you know, that, that I could potentially put to a money site, but in most cases, I would use a PBN or, a, you know, link to a guest post or whatever it was going to be. There would be a buffer there. Um and then I, you know, I can sleep better at night. So that would be my advice. Um, so the Canadian Algerian is asking, "What's the weirdest GMB niche you've ever ranked, Chris?" I, I, it's all. It's always been very nothing weird, you know, nothing strange or out of the ordinary. Um, generally when I, if I were to take anybody in, they're already in position to win. They just need that extra, that extra bump, you know? Uh, so, but I've never taken in anybody that isn't, you know, like I wouldn't take in a roofer, you know, so a little bit upper on the scale. Um, and they're already in position. Like they've been in business for this much time. They have the social presence. Like they're just right there. They just need that, that bump, but nothing odd, nothing, nothing odd. <laughs> I've had a couple. The, the worst one that always sticks in my memory was, was a woman who wanted, uh, or her service was tantric massage. Now, I'll let you Google what the fuck that is. I had no idea. I just thought it was some weird form of Swedish massage to your shoulders. Um, I didn't realize it was her finger in your ass. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you were gonna say that. I was thinking, damn, I'm gonna go look that up quick. And then you said, <laughs> and so, <laughs> oh man, um, funny, yeah. Um, damn. Chris, how's the new GMB training going? Any date when it's ready, will it be showing how to get GMBs in the top three listings? That the main objective of the training is going to be. Yes. Yes. The main objective is going to be how to put yourself in position to get into the map pack. Everybody wants verification. I'm, you know, I'm going to steer clear of that kind of stuff because the stuff that I'm doing now is, is not something that should be shared. Uh, but that it's focusing on map pack ranking. I mean, obviously that's, you know, what, how to put yourself in position to get in the map pack ranking. And then obviously I'm thinking I probably had about 22, instances done i'm i'm looking at it i'm thinking i should be able to get it within 50 or 60 videos um but please go to the you know it's within all the places just sign up for the newsletter and as soon as it's done boom and it, i'll be i'm very very fair with um trainings you know as far as pricing yeah um Brittany bond for the fod god wait looks like spam to me something about everlasting life um so, bullshit. It's harder to find a doctor to try practice on you, someone that really understands SEO. I would say a true. So, I'm not sure what Glenn's 
Oh, I, I think you might be talking about the niches and shit like that. We're talking about, you know, getting the money from certain types of clients, you know, professional people and whatnot. Um, Carol Palmer, any alternatives to micro workers? I'm in Australia, I am in Australia and the amount of workers for our region is slim. I've tested emulators but can't confirm with analytics if it's showing as a unique visit. I that's <laughs> um well I mean you can try the uh, other ones you can try mechanical turk you can try micro workers uh I mean if you're looking at emulators I'm not sure man yeah I I I'll give you this if you have an emulator I'd be looking for an emulator that can duplicate a sim. Because if you can duplicate a sim, which is a mobile proxy, the mobile proxy is changing so frequently. You have to run it through the mobile proxy, kind of like an IPv6, right? I know, I know it's not, but how you know, like Facebook, they they can't really register it. If that's how mobile is working, so if you want to trigger and register with your emulator, I'd be looking for a way that can duplicate a sim within your emulator. Okay, that's mm. all. That's all I'm going to give you. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, ah, Glenn Ingram was talking about hourly rates um, when he was saying bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, we're worth more than fucking doctors. That's what I would say. But sadly, guys, we are out of time. Um, we didn't get through all of the questions this week, um, which is a good thing, I would support, I, I guess. Um, if you do have something that was really important and we didn't get to ask it, please leave it in the comments below the video and uh, myself or Chris can go through and um, answer that later on um, when we get a chance. But for this week, thank you everyone um, who took part. It was great to see some new faces in there as well. We are here every Wednesday at the same time and hopefully we'll be back next week. Chris, you still okay to continue? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm having fun doing it, so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's a good laugh. Something to do. I'm, uh, SEO. I'm very. Uh, it's just you know, it's just me. I'm in my in my thoughts, you know. So yeah. I'm happy to talk with everybody and you and whoever. yeah. That, so we'll be back next week, same time. Um, so guys, thank you very much, and Chris, thank you very much for taking part again, and we will catch you all next week. Cheers, guys. See ya. <laughs>